Hello and welcome to That Tech Pod, where we discuss all things e-discovery, cybersecurity, data privacy, and tech innovations. I'm Laura Milstein, and I know a little bit about technology. And I'm Gabby Schulte, and I definitely know the least about technology in this uh, in this chat right now, but I am super excited to learn. That's why each week we're talking to heavy hitters in the industry to help us break down these topics, which we're really excited about. And today is an extra special episode. Gabby, do you want to tell everyone why today's episode is so special and, uh, you know, who's with us? Yeah, so today we're so excited. We're talking to Aman Ahmed. He is the founder of Music for Pets. And that's why we have uh, some friends also visiting us. Um, my dog just moved, but she'll be back in her spot, which is normally there. Um, she's camera shy. She's, she's little, camera shy. She was just like, shy. oh, this is video. I'm getting out of here. Um, yeah. Yeah. But a little bit more about music for pets. So Aman has created basically the Netflix for pets with two brands, Relax My Dog relax, and Relax My Cat. Uh, Aman's company is an in-house content producer that makes relaxing music, TV, and games for pets based on eight years of research. Over 20 million pets around the world are using this product. Um, so Aman, thank you for joining us. We're so excited to have you here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, excited is an understatement. Clearly, you can tell my dog just will not <laughs> stay calm. He's like, look how so crazy sweet. he's being so excited. <laughs> <laughs> he um, actually okay. has earbuds in and he's listening to music. Yeah, right so now. that's, that's exactly why he's so he's chill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get too carried away with our clear excitement, um, we, we kind of looked into you a little bit. We looked into your company and we noticed that in the last nine years of founding and building this company, and it seems like a few other companies that you kind of intertwined in here, you raised a whopping, hold on, da -da -da -da, zero dollars in investments. And yet you achieved 1.4 million in annual turnover and cater to millions of pets around the world. So I'm kind of intrigued by this. And I think I speak for Murray, Gabby, and Emma, who has left the room because she is uncomfortable being on camera. Uh, when I say we want to know more, why did this happen? How did this happen? Can you tell us more about you and uh, this adventure? Yeah, so we were kind of looking into like music therapy for pets um, ages ago, like nine years ago. And um, just, you know, my music producer at the time, his cat and dog had noise anxiety because of where he lived in El Salvador, which happens to be the most violent country in the world. So there's always like police sirens and disturbances, etc. So his, uh, yeah, cat and dog had uh, noise anxiety. And then a lot of my friends, their pe uh, pets had noise anxiety. So for, it, there was nothing out there apart from thunder jackets and CBD, etc. So we thought, what's the natural solution that has a state? Uh, change of state on a brain of any animal it's mostly music so we started looking into it and then different frequencies and uh, and then we just started experimenting and slowly over time it grew um, and a business was a side hustle for a long time I was CEO of another company um, but then I took the business full-time in 2016 so it's been a full-time business for I, I guess five years and over the time, it just grew like uh, very quickly. But yeah, we then we branched out into visuals, visual therapy, it's TV for dogs, TV for cats. So to kind of fast forward, we do all our research in house. Uh, we create all our content in house. And uh, in 2020, we had about 42 million pets around the world consume content on our platform, and they consumed a uh, hundred and. 15 million hours of content, which is about 13 and a half thousand years of content was consumed in one year. Wow. So that's a crazy. It's clearly having an impact. That's, yeah. That's a lot of content right there. I wonder what that number is in dog years. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That was a bad joke. <laughs> that was good. It was good. Um, that's such a, a, an amazing story, Aman, because so I have a rescue and I had such an issue, uh, you know, when I first got her, kind of similar to your friend, because um, I didn't realize 
you know, the rescues, you know, I, this was a good rescue, but they, I think they didn't really also kind of know Emma's um, background or situation because, you know, they get the dogs, they transfer them, they normally get them, at least around here where I live in DC, they get them from like rural areas. And so Emma was from a rural area, but when she was with them, she was with her siblings and she was okay. And she was like in a backyard in a suburb, but I live in the yeah. city. So, you know, brought her and she was totally unprepared. She, at first she wouldn't walk, like she wouldn't even walk down the street. Um, she barked at my TV. She barked at my stove. Like she just didn't know all of these things. And I would have loved, I mean, we've done a lot of training. It's a lot better now, thank God. Um, and she's awesome. But um, I would have loved to have known about music for pets when I first got Emma. And I'm so excited that I know about it now. Um, so what has that journey been like? I mean, I, you talked a little bit about it, but just kind of knowing about the impact that it's having, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, we know like over the time we knew we wanted something when people give the saying that they uh, first thought this was a joke and then they gave it a try and it had a complete impact and uh, like positive impact on their dog. And then they would tell loads of people. And it's so interesting, that's just how it snowballed. Like, we didn't spend any money on marketing dollars whatsoever because um, it was just word of mouth. We created such an awesome product. Obviously, it was we were just learning and iterating from there. And um, yeah, like even that, we get so many stories. It's insane. Like having the most, like people saying that their dogs had surgery or their dog has terrible anxiety and they've used it for years. Um, like all the way to the point there where they say, um, this was the only track that worked on a dog's anxiety. And then they were like, uh, my dog passed away and I want to remember with this song because it was his favorite song. Oh, and so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was like, well, that was sad. You just brought us to a sad place. But it's well, also like a, a nice, like a nice sad. It's yeah. touching though. Yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's just kind of like, um, I think the impact it's having on like, you're like, wow, this is crazy that they want to like, they want to use it for the funeral. And it's just so yeah. powerful because that, wow, this had such an impact on that dog's life that the owner wants to remember their dog in this way. Right. Um, so, yeah, loads, hundreds of thousands of yeah. stories, probably millions. Yeah, it's just... That's amazing. I bet that's mad. so rewarding on your end yeah. to having, uh, you know, as, as the business owner, as the founder, to know that. Um, I also wanted to ask because you know we we were kind of browsing around and we noticed it's not just you know dogs and cats it's other types of animals too can you tell mm -hmm. us like how you got into that and was that something that you discovered that like oh well this obviously translates to more than just your you know dogs and cats and was the research different for that yeah, and how many yeah. animals do you, I'm just curious, because we saw like rats and ferrets and rabbits, and so it was like extreme, like how many animals can you do this for? So we've experimented with a, no, a number of animals, obviously some of them, are, they, they fail, like they're not that great or not that popular, and some of them are successful, like um, the most successful stuff is for rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, um, like horses as well and it's all yeah. just different you know um different <laughs> ways of like sounds etc that we play around with and um it's all experimental content but we never ever like fully publicize it because it's just it's still kind of um yeah we just let it tick along in the background and we collect that data um but we know it's having if it has a positive impact then yeah, we know it's working. Do you listen to all of the music? Like when you're like, wow, this is an incredible soundtrack for rabbits and the rabbits are sitting there feeling relaxed, enjoying their day. Do you also like any of the music for them or is it music that's specifically designed that only animals like? 
it's it's a bit of both because there's different frequencies and different ranges. Um, but I, yeah, it's the it's designed that humans find it relaxing. A lot of humans enjoy it. So um, it is basically our content is now designed for humans and dogs and cats to enjoy together. It's kind of a middle ground that we found because That's obviously. Nice. Yeah, we if, all want to. Uh, we all want to listen to it. Like Gabby just went to get her dog and let her know that you know this is yeah. her moment, and she just left. She we she was like, "Nah, it. I'm not into it." <laughs> she was like, "This again? I always exactly. there for a minute, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, exactly." Do you have any pets? So at the moment, I don't because I've been like just this traveling a lot. This is awkward. I know it's awkward. <laughs> I know it is. But the thing is, for me, it's just like um yeah just my lifestyle is so nomadic yeah right now yeah like I don't know fair. where I want to be and all that stuff and I think uh you know growing the business etc cetera, etc cetera. um yeah it's just kind of yeah quite quite a nomadic place and I thought to myself like yeah I want to have a dog um I know what dog I want to get but there's a certain time yeah in my sure. life when I know I'm going to get it so, he said he's not ready right now. I know you want this is the dog you're referring to, but unfortunately, <laughs> he said he's I'll steal him. He's busy I'll performing Zoom meetings. He doesn't have time. Yeah, exactly. He's so cute. <laughs> and then he, um, look how upset he got. He just left the room. He's like, I can't. I, have exactly. Dog. I'm leaving. <laughs> Why the lights off? Um, that's the thing about these lights. They're always on the timer. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in a WeWork space. They don't, oh, there you go. They don't belong. Yeah. Um, where where, where are, are you? Sorry, where, are you in Manchester right now? Yeah, I'm in Manchester. In office. Cool. Nice. Just just yeah. checking on the the location so we know on which we to to like reach out to to time to fix the lights. <laughs> fix the lights. Exactly. Um, <laughs> well, I'm on. Um, we're curious to know. Um, you know, we're primarily a tech podcast, but we kind of you know. Obviously, we like to branch out every now and then. Um, and we kind of wanted to know what goes on behind the scenes for music of, for pets. Um, you know, how do you create the content? Can you take us a little bit, uh, you know, behind the veil in that sense and just walk us through like a normal day in production? Um, I wouldn't, it's not really a day in production, it's just an ongoing thing. Yeah, because we look at we look we look at the data as like what's performing, what's not performing, quantitative, qualitative. We then kind of reach feed that back to the music team, but at the same time we also want to be experimenting, and then um, they're experimenting with sounds, and then then we come up with like different ideas of like where we want to do filming locations. We outsource, we find the people in those countries, we turn the the scope, and all that, and then. Yeah, we just bring it back to bring it together. We edit it. So it's definitely um, ongoing. Like um, the music takes months to make, but, we, but we're constantly churning it out and same with the content. But because we have so many people doing it, it's just that allows us to refresh our content as much as possible. But the whole process takes a while, yeah. Yeah. And so... Do you work with like um, a group of musicians and and music producers for that? Um, and is all is that sorry? Is that also in house? Oh, everything's in house. Yeah, the yeah. music producers, everything is all so in house. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Gabby plays music and is the producer of this show. So whoever you've got going on, I don't know <laughs> if they're going to be as great as the that tech pop, but we support right. them anyway. <laughs> hey. <laughs> sure they're great <laughs> yeah you know, we believe that um but this is so interesting to us because as gabby said you know we are a tech podcast but one of the things that we're trying to do more of is tech innovation and what you're doing is 
exactly that. It, it seems like a little bit of a twist on the tech factor, but it's not because you're streaming it. I mean, this is something that you are behind the scenes doing the producing, doing the editing, figuring out what music, testing it with animals, we assume, and, and taking it to that next level. So it's really a really cool thing. Um, and when we looked into this more, I mean, you have millions of subscribers and people following you. When we tried to find who your competitors would be, we saw Dog TV. Um, and we know that's probably a competitor, but we didn't really find a lot of other competitors. Is this sort of a niche market? Do you feel like dog TV only offers TV? Why are they not offering music? And what about all the other animals out there? What are your thoughts on, you know, the industry that you're in? Mm, yeah, so, um, so we obviously offer TV as well and music and it's all combined. Um, dog TV, I think is, quite uh, I think they have an online subscription but very traditional so they're uh from what I've heard are plugged into traditional tv networks um so apart from that like this you know we were the first ones to do it and we just kind of went all in because we knew like you know a little bit further down the line it's just going to be like massive and have a huge impact. So um, there isn't that, I don't think there's many competitors. We always keep an eye on it. And um, it's, it's a perfect, it's a niche that has an impact on every animal around the world. There's like 1 billion pets that are owned around the world. I think that's a perfect business model to have a niche that has, that is just, has an impact on everything like yeah. such a huge audience we think um, you should expand it to outside of pets you know maybe take your music to you know zoos and wildlife locations like if i was trapped in a zoo i like i have a love and hate relationship with zoos so as somebody who's like it's so great i can see the animals i'm also like free them free them immediately i feel like they probably have <laughs> the same anxiety we're all feeling in this pandemic <laughs> mm. so and so they, you know, maybe you could take it to music, TV, and games just for animals in general. Yeah. Expand past the pets. Just, just a thought. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many areas we can we can go into for sure. A hundred percent. And I feel like, yeah, I I think that obviously the animals I feel so sorry for are the the whales. I mean the Ugh. dolphins that have to perform. Don't even uh, get me started. <laughs> This is Gabby's thing. She feels deep oh, about man. this. Do not go to SeaWorld. No. Um, no, no. Yeah. I would never, I'd refuse to ever go to something like that. There should, yeah. there should be in the wild. It's so bad for their mental health. It's insane. It is insane. And, and well, kind of just going back to the mental health aspect. I mean, I'm living in, you know, uh, the past, what, 15 months or so, we've all been living in sort of a, a pretty trapped scenario pandemic um have you found any um spike in usership or or anything given the fact that um well actually it's interesting though because i feel like emma has had the best year of her life because like i've been home with her all the time yeah. <laughs> but i'm sure there's like new anxieties every day so what has what sort of changes or challenges or opportunities have you seen during the pandemic uh, well uh, the pet market grew crazy um a lot of people got pets. We got a lot of users and all that stuff. But it kind of goes back to your um, original question, like why don't I have a dog? Because, and, and as an example, you have to get a dog at the right time. And right. a lot of people got dogs purely because it was selfish. They were lonely yeah. and they thought I'll get a dog. And now the shelters are filling up quicker Mm. because people go back to work and realize oh this is reality of owning a oh, dog that's so oh, sad and that's that's, so that's sad. what's happening so like you know you really have to question yourself like when you're buying getting a dog like or adopting a dog it, yeah like are you truly doing it for selfish reasons and that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people did during the pandemic and i think um yeah i think Business-wise, is this year 2021 is is better than 2020 because hmm. flip side, yeah, 
people got pets, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the user base that we had before anyway, they're going to go back to work. And as a result, the, we get used no matter what, basically. Um, we just got discovered a little bit more because a lot more uh, new pet ownership happened in 2020. Right. Yeah. And then kind of going back to that too, you know, during the pandemic, when you have a new puppy, you're supposed to socialize them. But, um, you know, during the pandemic, we couldn't really do that. So now that pet owners, new pet owners are able to go back out, the, the dogs aren't used to all of that socialization. And that is also creating some anxiety for the pets. Um, as well, which kind of goes back to that sort of, you really have to do think about, you know, your lifestyle and how it is, how you, how mm -hmm. you can have, uh, bring up the pet in the best way. So, um, I'm Look sure what that's... you're doing to Murray right now. You're getting him so <laughs> upset. He's like, yeah, I have no friends now. It's a pandemic. <laughs> Someone, someone look at how Murray looks, looks pretty so chill. Upset. He's so upset uh, now. He needs to be listening to music. For I mean, Emma, Emma's, done, Emma's fed up with me. Yeah, she's, she left. She's she left. So over it. <laughs> yeah. I think that is actually really interesting, though. And just like thinking about it is a flip side, because I always think like, how great all these dogs are getting saved because it's a pandemic. But I never really thought about afterwards when they're going to a shelter or that they aren't able to get socialized so that's actually really sad and i yeah you guys really have brought me to a sad place on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> um but just to bring in a little more on the tech side if if pets want to stream your music mm -hmm. obviously we'll say pets only at this time <sighs> so if if murray here who is not interested he does not want to look at you at this time he's like very <laughs> upset um but if murray here wants to stream any music or watch any shows he's interested now where can mm -hmm. he do this where where can he find you guys because as yeah. as we mentioned we didn't know about this yeah, so um, YouTube, all our concerts on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, every other music streaming service, Tidal, uh, all that stuff. Mm. And then we have a subscription on RelaxMyDog and RelaxMyCat.com. Um, and that's just more like tailored. A tailored mm -hmm. service is ad-free, it's $5 a month, and it can be consumed on you know mobile, smart TV, laptop, etc. So, yeah, we just... Um, you know, we're, we're kind of, and at the same time, we're kind of looking at other ways to distribute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, from the tech side, our pet flicks, as we call it, the subscription <laughs> service, is, awesome. um, yeah, we, 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 we've built that from the ground up. We literally built our own Netflix from the ground up because there's no out-of-the-box technology. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, if and it is quite solid. Like, you know, if I wanted to, I could white-label this technology, but... Um, you know, I don't want to get too distracted and we'll just focus on, yeah. you know, doing what we're doing. And um, so, yeah, it, it was uh, the subscription side of the business, probably the, the hard, not, I wouldn't say the hardest, probably the most challenging because we're growing it slowly on purpose, but at the same time where, you know, just um, making sure the technology every time it goes up, is it's kind of like building, it's kind of like Jenga. <laughs> being very de being very delicate with it yeah but as, um, as that as that jenga gets taller at the same time we're like mm, rebuilding the foundations you know in jenga yeah. it usually collapses though so it does yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. like, just be cautious with that metaphor because uh... <laughs> yeah, no, no, you we, we, we win the game it. as long as you win we, the game <laughs> we've had it where it has collapsed but this time what we're doing with jenga is gluing everything together <laughs> yeah yeah all right the new way the new way, exactly. new way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well i'm on this has been such an awesome conversation thank you for joining and i'm so happy that we know about music for pets now i'm going to go uh get emma on it and and see if she chills out <laughs> we're gonna test this after this episode we're gonna get our dogs really hyper get them running around and then we're gonna put on the music and see like what happens so happens. yeah he's already Happy. getting anxiety over it so <laughs> <laughs> so Can tell. <laughs> 
Well, thank out. you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for being our first official on video episode. Um, yeah. We don't like to do it. I mean, we just aren't ready to show the world how great and exciting our video footage is. But for the dogs, we felt like it was necessary. And for you, because we're big fans now. Um, and so if yeah. you're, if our dogs don't enjoy your music, that might change. But, <laughs> <laughs> but this has been awesome. Thank you so much for, for coming on our episode. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of That Tech Pod. This week was a special episode as we didn't just do audio this week, we also included a video. If you want to check that video out, you can go to our website, www.thattechpod.com. You can also see the video on our LinkedIn page and just look us up, That Tech Pod, LinkedIn. I think we have a Twitter out there as well. I don't know if we tweet that much, but we are working on it. If you want to be on our uh, podcast, if you know anyone else that wants to be on our podcast, or if you just want to say hey to us, you can email us at thattechpod at gmail.com. This week, we did a little bit of a different ending, but if you want to get the real review on what pets think of music for pets, then definitely check out the video where the pets kind of tell you what they think of music for pets. Thank you again, and follow, subscribe, share. Please give us a five five-star rating and review. It truly helps the algorithm at Apple Podcasts. And check us out next week when we have another episode on Tuesday. Talk to you then. Mm